to complete a land cover plot, we simply go and add a new transect. We select a date, that would be today, unless we've already collected the data on paper and we're going to go back and, and enter the data on the phone later. And then it will open up a screen where we can select one of four transect directions, north, east, south, or west. When we open up one of those transects, we've got five locations on that transect at five paces, 10, 15, 20, and 25 paces. Those are marked in yards and meters. We click on one of those, and what we see is a picture of a stick with five marks on it, which is your stick or your yard stick or your meter stick, and a number of pictures that represent different types of vegetation cover. What we're going to do is record what vegetation occurs at each of those five points. And by points, we really do mean points, not the general area in front of that point, but what is literally intersected by the pin as we drop it at that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the point at the first mark, and we actually hit woody litter. Now, woody litter, because it's actually hitting this twig. If I'd hit the, the leaves on this, that would be herbaceous litter. I scroll down the screen and I record woody litter. I then go to the next point and I've intersected a grass. This happens to be a perennial grass. It is not alive, but it is still rooted. So we are going to record it because it is still persistent on the plot. It's protecting the plot. I then look underneath that perennial grass and what I find is that I've actually hit the base of that grass. And that's also very important. So we go ahead and re-record plant base at that same mark. Plant base can be any type of base, a perennial grass, an annual grass, a shrub, a tree, etc. I then go to the next point. I drop the pin and I've hit nothing at all. And so I record bare ground at the top. At the fourth point, I drop it, and this is hitting herbaceous litter. So it's basically litter that is not woody, it's off the grass plant above it, in this case. And finally, at the last point, I drop it, and it looks like I'm dropping it through this perennial grass, but I actually haven't hit any of the grass leaves. So I look very carefully, I drop the pin, but I did hit a rock at the bottom. A rock is anything larger than five millimeters for the purposes of land cover, as opposed to the soil characterization where anything larger than two millimeters. So in this case, we're looking at anything larger than about a quarter inch. That then completes the observations for determining vegetation cover. If you swipe the screen, it also provides options for recording vegetation height. There are six different height classes included. The shortest is zero to 10 centimeters or zero to four inches. To determine height, I'm going to look within a defined area. And we need to define what that area is. That area could be the entire square meter or square yard in front, or in the United States, the standard protocol on rangelands is to look in a one foot or approximately 30 centimeter diameter circle centered at the center point on the stick. And so basically I'm gonna look within this area and I'm going to look for the highest vegetation that occurs within that cylinder. And what I see is that highest vegetation is right here. And I can actually use my stick and I see that that is less than four inches or 10 centimeters. And I record that as the first height class of zero to 10 centimeters or zero to four inches. The next protocol is gap. And what I do here is I look to see if the front edge of the stick or the top edge of the stick falls clear of any vegetation canopy. And what I see is actually no, there are places where it intercepts vegetation canopy, so there is no canopy gap. 
I then also want to look to see if it intercepts any plant bases, if it's completely within a, a gap between plant bases. And again, I drag a stick or a pin along the edge and I see, no, it's actually hitting this plant base here. So there is no basal gap. We may also wish to record whether or not parts of the stick land within a gap so we can look at smaller gaps. Finally, there is an option to include species density. First, we need to decide which species we're interested in, and we record that and the name of that species. So, for example, if we are simply interested in looking at perennial grass density, I would just write perennial grass, and then I would count within the one yard or one meter box in front using the second stick as a guide the number of perennial grasses. And a perennial grass occurs within it if at least half of that plant base occurs within the box. So we have one, two, three. So we would record the number three. Again, all of these methods are optional and in many cases our users find that they only need to record the first screen, which is cover. We do find that if you want good, relatively precise data, you are going to need to record 100 points, which is 20 sticks. 20 sticks times 5 points per stick to get decent data. Also, we do find that it is very helpful to calibrate, to make sure that when you drop the pin at 100 points, you're getting about the same bare ground, about the same perennial grass cover as someone else is. So find someone else, a friend, a colleague, a family member, to go out with you and do it together. For more information, you can find it on the app in the question marks. Tap on the question marks, it'll bring up some text, provide a little more explanation. You can also find more information on our website, landpotential.org. On the website, there are a number of training materials. You can sign up for email updates so you'll get the latest information on the Land PKS app as soon as it comes out. Thank you.